Five days out from the marathon, we headed from LA to the East Coast. For the first couple of days, we stayed at my aunt's house in Taunton, about an hour outside of Boston proper. Let me tell you, if you think you know a Buffalo Bills fan, you have not met a real Buffalo Bills fan till you have met my aunt Camille. She is diehard Bills mafia through and through. After two days there, we headed to our Airbnb, which was only about 15 minutes from the starting line in Medway, Massachusetts. Three days out, we headed to the finish line in downtown Boston and hit the Marathon Expo to pick up my bib and race packet. The line to get your stuff sent you on probably a half mile long winding path goose chase. Two days out from the race, we had two priorities. One, a good night's sleep, and two, an ice bath. It's time to dry off and let the body warm back up naturally two nights before, so sleep is definitely the priority tonight. I try to wind it down very, very soon before 9 p.m., be asleep at 10 p.m., get a good nine hours, and then we'll be at the penultimate day, one day out tomorrow, so exciting stuff. Yeah, thank you. One day out, we decided to drive the course just to see exactly what I was in for the next day, and before I knew it, it was race day. Here we go. The gun went off, it was so congested, we were towards the front of the pack but still probably about 10 seconds between the time the gun went off and the time we actually hit the start mat that starts your timing chip. The first 800 meters, we were probably running like 640, 650 pace, no joke. It was so congested, it was really hard to move. We did manage to zigzag our way through a bunch of people and by the time we hit the first mile it was right around 550, so a little slow but not bad. That first four miles of the race overall is a pretty steep decline, I was trying my best not to get too excited. I had the splits written on my arm of what I wanted to do to run a 230 marathon. And I think I was supposed to go through five miles in around 28.35. 
ended up going about 30 seconds too fast, right around 28 flat, 28.05 through that first five miles. As far as Boston Marathon weather goes, it wasn't too bad, but it also wasn't ideal either. Beginning of the race was raining, not too hard, but pretty moderate. And then it was kind of on and off throughout the race, but there was a headwind pretty much the entire race. It is basically a straight point to point from the beginning to the end of the race of the Boston Marathon. It wasn't so crazy, probably a little under 10 miles an hour, but it was consistent and it probably made a little bit of a difference overall throughout the race. Right around mile 10 or 11, I want to say we hit Wellesley College, which is an all-girls school, and I guess it's known as the Scream Tunnel. There were hundreds, if not thousands, of girls lined up screaming with posters. They all had their arms out to give the runners high fives, and I was just so excited, had a ton of energy, and I probably high-fived I don't know, 500 to 1,000 people within 30 seconds. Honestly, it did probably slow me down a little bit. When you're hitting someone's hand running like 540 pace and they're standing still, your arm kind of gets thrown back a little bit. So it did slow me down, but honestly, the energy was just so cool and so positive and I couldn't help myself. So maybe lost a little bit of time there, but it was super worth it. I went through the half marathon 13.1 miles in just about 114 exactly, which was a slight cause for concern. I really wanted to go out in pretty much exactly 115, maybe like 114.50, just a a tad under because I knew that second half was going to be so tough with all the hills, especially because that first mile was a little bit slow, 550. I figured I should be going through the half marathon right at about 115. So I was a little bit worried that I might hit a wall when it came to those Newton's hills and especially heartbreak. And well, I was right. 17 miles in, I was still about 50 seconds under 230 pace until I hit Newton's Hills, and they absolutely thrashed me. It became really, really hard to hold 540s, and I was worried with almost 9 miles to go, if I kept trying to push it and hold that pace, I might have to walk and not even be able to cross the finish line. And I hit Heartbreak Hill, and it really did, in a way, break my heart, broke my hope, and pretty much destroyed any chance of me breaking 230. Nice job, Eliza. Keep it up. I got to the top of Heartbreak Hill, which ended up being my slowest mile of the race, a 634, and my legs were absolutely trashed. Those last five miles, I was in a dark place. I've run ultra marathons before and experienced a lot of pain. And you might not have to endure the pain as long as an ultra marathon, but the marathon pain is so much more intense. My hamstrings were seizing up pretty much every step, and I really did think for a second that I might have to walk or might not be able to even cross the finish line. I was in a huge mental and physical battle with myself. This race, the people, the atmosphere, the energy, the volunteers was a once in a lifetime experience for sure. Absolutely amazing. I didn't end up breaking 230. I ran 235 on the dot. I think I was somewhere in the 300s as far as placement out of 30,000. And I can't lie to you, I'm just so proud of myself for getting through it and not walking or stopping the entire time. I was hurting some of the worst I've ever hurt in my entire life and I really really was unsure about myself those last little parts of the race so I'm really proud of myself I crossed the line and all of a sudden became very very cold I was not doing well at all I did not feel good managed to get a picture with George after the race which was awesome and then I basically limped my way to a warming bus where I waited for about an hour to get picked up I was in a lot of pain post-race there's one thing I learned from just running a 235 marathon of Boston. It's that America runs on Duncan. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be tough. Oh yeah, that feels good. We went out after the race, had some fun, celebrated a little, and just continued to make as many memories as possible from this amazing time. This entire experience, the lead up, the training, everything, the actual race itself, the week I spent in Boston was just amazing, absolutely awesome and inspiring. And I had the best time. The people of Boston are absolutely amazing, so generous, so kind, and just incredible people. This was the 10th anniversary year of the Boston bombing. And you can tell that this city is stronger than ever and so appreciative of the marathon and everything it does for the city. I can tell you after racing one of the biggest marathons in the world, the Boston Marathon, that the running community is alive and well, and I absolutely love it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, be good humans, do good things, search for happiness.
Peace.